from years of killer whale studies, we know that really killer whales are kind of mummy's boys and mummy's girls. They have these really tight family groups that stay together for a long, long time. And it allows them to pass on what they've learned to the next generation and into the next generation. And we also see that in the hunting strategies. And what we see across the globe is different strategies associated with hunting mammals. Or hunting fish. And I wanted to investigate this variation closer to home, so in the waters around the UK. And that actually first started here in the Natural History Museum. When we're working in the field, we can observe the behavior of the animals, but some museum specimens can give us something else. They can actually give us a picture through time. Yeah, so this is the, the jaw that I wanted to show you, the largest. It's something that was really surprising when we first started to look at the ones in the collection here. And that was some big differences in the teeth. Some had very worn down teeth and others had very little wear. And we wanted to find out whether this variation in tooth wear was related to what the animal had been feeding upon during its lifetime and what the feeding strategy might have been. To do this, we looked at the chemical composition of the teeth. It can tell us roughly where the animal is feeding within the food chain. Is it low down, so for example, feeding on fish, or is it feeding higher up in the food chain? So is it feeding on a seal that ate on, on the fish? And that gave us some exciting results. The specimens with unworn teeth had a signature that was consistent with them feeding on mammals, for example, like seals or porpoise. Whereas those with the worn teeth had a signature of them feeding upon fish, such as herring or mackerel. With some individuals also showing a signature that suggested some of the time they're feeding upon mammals. So in other places we find that killer whales that feed on different things are actually genetically different as well. Probably because the way that these behaviours are inherited, which is being passed on through mother to her calf, through learning process, it sort of mimics the transmission of genetics as well, from mother to calf. And that was something that we wanted to see with these museum specimens as well. We managed to extract a little bit of DNA. And when we looked, we did find indeed that the animals with the worn teeth came from a really different genetic lineage to the animals with the unworn teeth. They would have diverged from a common female ancestor a long, long time ago. What this study told us was that we have two different cultural lineages, but also that these cultural lineages are distinct genetic lineages. So we have quite a bit of diversity in the waters around the UK and in the broader Northeast Atlantic around the world. At the moment, we just consider the killer whale as a single species. But really, we probably need to start thinking of them as being different units. And it's interesting to try and project forward whether or not this process eventually leads to them becoming different species.